everybody this is pastor ben lim with the breaker where we are believing for breakthrough in every area of your life remember it, the bible says that god is ball pairs on the lord of the breakthrough so no matter what you're experiencing expect new encounters and revelations with the holy spirit today we have a very good friend the prophet, the man of God, prophet Jamie Galloway, all the way from Tennessee. And we're going to talk about the prophetic reset. So we welcome you, man of God. God bless you. Thanks for being on our show today. Thank you, Ben. It's awesome, man. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I think it's so interesting because you're in Tennessee and it's definitely a revival and a prophetic hub where even a lot of prophets have moved to Tennessee and to the Nashville area. So I believe that there's even a real swirl in the atmosphere in your state. It's a really neat environment. And so a lot of good people that that I'm sure you know, and many of your uh, viewers know, I'm, I'm close, close enough to go out to lunch with. And so we, we're, uh, we're right down the road from each other. And so a lot, a lot of neat people. And it's, for me, it helps keep me sharpened and like iron sharpens iron. So one man sharpens another. And so I like to stay sharp and uh, bring my prophetic perspective to the table and help get helped by those who are, uh, who are, who are, who are much greater in, uh, in the prophetic than I am. Wow. Well, well, that's such a, a interesting comment for you to make because absolutely we all need to be surrounded uh, by fathers and mothers. Um, in fact, uh, and, you know, it's sad, yet we rejoice because uh, many fathers and mothers are actually transitioning home to be with the Lord right now in these seasons. And so we're going to see more of the greats and the lates uh, passing on. Uh, so it, it almost seems like that realm of the old wine or that vintage wine, I, I like to call it the vintage ancient wine. It seems like that old realm where there's such an honor for the word, such an honor for holiness such an honor for the anointing men and women of God. It seems like that old guard is really passing away. And today, even in 2021, now this broadcast is live on 2021, but wherever you're watching from, it's sometimes uh, it seems a little shallow or it seems a little milky rather than meaty. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like there's uh, a, an awakening right now or maybe even a concern because, uh, you know, there's such a disconnect with fathers, mothers, and healthy people around us, like you said, iron sharpens iron. I think that's part of uh, this kind of prophetic reformation that's taking place. We have to really learn from those that have gone on before us and and, and still remain among us. Thank God. Yes. And and so I make it a I make it a daily. If 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 not, uh, if I can't do that, I do it uh, more often than not uh, to get together with those that. I, I could learn from and uh, so that I can really grow and that prophetic reformation will take place in me. And uh, because I believe God wants to really teach us something about the time and the season we're living in, both teach us, uh, you know, what he wants to do, but also how to hear him and interpret it accurately. Because, you know, when revelation comes, Ben, there's a, there's a threefold process to it. There's revelation, interpretation, and then declaration. And so if we're not doing the, the thing in the middle, the interpretation right, then we're going to declare something that God's not saying. And, and the hard thing about that is just because you hear God doesn't mean you know what he's saying. And yeah. that's really a part of this prophetic reformation. We have to learn how to interpret what it is that he's saying to us uh, in a healthy way and then teach others how we got there, how, you know, show them, give them evidence, not only of the revelation, but also the interpretation. And that way people can have something to land on when they're actually applying the word in this season. And so I believe that's the prophetic reformation that we're stepping into. Well, I love that terminology, what you said, the prophetic reformation, because God is changing the form of how we prophesy, of of how we do prophetic communities, of how we judge prophetic words and release it. And I love even what you said, that it comes down, in a sense, to the prophet or to the prophetic person that's receiving the revelation. I mean, we're in 2021. We live in a plethora of information and revelation. And I just want to say that information 
is not revelation. Come on, somebody. But uh, we live in a plethora where there's so much revelation right now because the Spirit of God is pouring out like never before. Uh, however, uh, I always say this, Prophet Jamie, uh, that prophets must pray more than we say. And wow. some uh, the realm or the part of in interpreting something, we need to cry over it and we need to weep over it much more than just posting it so quickly or releasing it on the next show uh, when we wake up. And uh, possibly I feel like maybe the social media frenzy or an orphan spirit or just uh, maybe a lack of teaching or protocol. And that's what we're going to be talking about today in this prophetic reset on the breaker. I feel like, you know, that's where the uh, interpretation and the tearing and the caring of it uh, has been a premature. And I feel like we do need to do a better job of letting those things marinate in us and on us because there's a real weight when we release it. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that you're speaking my language, man. You, you, you know, take some time to really seek the heart of the Lord about the word. When you get a revelation, then you have to actually get God's heart as well concerning the word. Wow. So revelation can be a word of knowledge. It could be any kind of uh, of the gifts of prophecy found in 1 Corinthians 12 or any of the Romans 12 or Ephesians 4. But that prophetic word comes to you. But if you don't have the heart of God concerning the word, then you're going to miss when you're applying the word. And, uh, and that's misapplication. And so... We have to get the heart of God, and that only happens in the oil of intimacy, in in seeking His face and growing in Him, and growing in the love of God and and the wisdom of God, the fear of the Lord. You know, Paul says, "I was with you in fear and in trembling, and my speech and my preaching were were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in the demonstration of spirit and power." And so, when he's telling the Corinthian church this, he's saying, "Guys, I, I, I'm I'm coming to you." Uh, because I'm coming in service of uh, of the king. And so I'm not just coming by my own will. I'm coming by the service of the king. So I'm in fear and trembling before him while I communicate. We want to make sure that our ministry is both, is number one, pleasing to God and effective to man. And so if we're, if we're living in the fear of the Lord, that's what Jesus delighted himself in, according to Isaiah 11. If we live in the fear of the Lord, and when we give a word, we're always keeping him in our conscience. We're always keeping him set before us so that we're, our words are not presumptive. And that is one of the difficulties of modern prophetic ministry. There's a lot of presumption taking place. And, you know, in, in Deuteronomy, when it talks about the prophets prophesying and it doesn't come to pass, it's because they prophesied out of presumption. Mm. And, 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 you know, there's variables to that, Ben, as well, yeah. you know. Not every word that is spoken by the Lord has to take place. And that's something that we have to understand. When uh, David is seeking the Lord, inquiring of the Lord, is Saul going to get me? Is he going to come after me? And is he, going to get, is he going to kill me? And the Lord answers him, yes, Saul will take you. He will take you and your men, and then he will kill you. Mm. Well, David used that information that God had spoken to him to get out of the, the stronghold that he was held up in. And when he did, he escaped that death. He escaped being seized. And, and so not every word that God speaks is a word that actually is, uh, is going to happen, whether you like it or not. There's a predictive element to the nature of prophecy, but there's also a warning element. And so it gives us warning so that we can actually uh, as, as the scripture says, a, a wise man foresees evil and hides himself. We can actually move around the evil that's coming at us and using the prophetic word that God is speaking to us to, to actually uh, bypass a problem. And that is a helpful side of the prophetic that we need to begin to uh, grab a hold of. Well, well I, I just love what you said there, Jamie, because uh, prophecy and the prophetic is meant to help. It's not meant to hurt people. It's meant to help people and edify. Uh, you know, I'm just reminded in the book of Acts uh, where the prophet came before uh, Apostle Paul and begged him, you know, this and this X, Y, Z is going to happen. But still, Apostle Paul felt a conviction that he needed to go. 
Of course, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and it's those many years later where anything of that prophetic fulfillment took place. And I feel like there's such a realm of mystery when it comes to the prophetic that we as well, I mean, we shouldn't always keep things and say it's mystical, but, you know, I think we need to embrace the, the mysticism or the, the mysterious side of prophecy and just how big and vast it is in the midst of it all. And, uh, you know, but at the same time, you know, uh, I, I mean, I feel there's a real soberness right now as we're talking about this, Jamie. Uh, there's a real sober fear of the Lord uh, on this broadcast and it's healthy and it's awesome and it's incredible because uh, we will be held accountable. We will be held accountable before God. Not necessarily before people, but before God uh, on what we say and what we release. Because at the end of the day, God is our judge. And, and we should be doing all things out of intimacy and out of overflow. But I want to go back to this thing that what you said earlier, uh, Prophet, about misapplication. You know, uh, maybe about a year ago, I gave a word about misdiagnosing and how, you know, in the hospitals, it's so common right now today, unfortunately, but so many doctors will misdiagnose you, you know, and, and so you come into the check room, uh, you know, you get checked in, uh, check, checked up on and and, you know, they they call you schizophrenic when you're not schizophrenic or they call you or you have cancer when you don't have cancer. So and then you begin to get loaded up on on so much meds and on drugs and then now you're never the same again. So there's a misdiagnosing. Because there's a lack of uh, being able to recognize what's really going on. And I feel like even in the church and in the prophetic, there's been a misdiagnosing where and so many people are actually much more hurt, stuck on meds. Uh, you know, they're, they've lost their minds and they're not their selves anymore because they lost their souls. But there's a misdiagnosing. And I feel like we do need to be able to call things out as they are. Otherwise, it can hurt people and leave them in a worse detrimental state. Yeah, that's a really good point, Ben. Uh, I mean, you know, not every word, you know, sometimes we, 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 you know, there's, there's these big uh, box stores that you go to and you go shop, getting a pair of clothes, you know, maybe a shirt, and it's kind of one size fits all. Well, that's not what the prophetic is. Uh, the prophetic is not one size fits all. The prophetic is dialed in specifically to that individual. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there, there's words that, yeah, God, they're general in nature, but I like to call them designer words, <laughs> you know, like a designer piece of clothing or a designer car, you know, it, it, it form fits you. And so that designer word given in due season in the right time can be the most helpful thing the, and and that really happens in times of transition. It happens in times of urgency. Those those moments are in times of a catalyzing of the gifts of God in you. And so we have to begin to 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 level up when it comes to the prophetic. But the re prophetic reformation that is taking place right now, we have um, we have a lot of prophetic words that are happening, uh, you know, coming out, and and the rate of uh, fulfillment is very low. When you really think about it, okay. and 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 I th and I have to go. Okay, what is this about? I'm not going to just kind of jump to the conclusion someone's a false prophet or, or or what you know that that's that I think that's the conclusion that people jump to. But what I want to jump to is how do I learn from this moment? And so uh, for me, I've seen there uh, I've seen a difference between uh, sort of more the the faith uh, type of prophecy. And the prophecy that prophesies the word of the Lord. And so we have to understand there's a difference. And what we do is we, we apply this faith, the faith to move mountains, to prophecy. And so uh, when we say Jesus, as Jesus said in Matthew 21, if anyone says this mountain be removed, be cast in the sea, it will be done for them. And so we kind of take that application and, and apply it to prophecy. Well, if I say it with, mo with more faith and prophesy with the most faith, then it will happen. Well, that's actually a, a misapplication in itself. Mm -hmm. And so when you're talking about misapplication, there are two times where the Lord heard the Father, when Jesus heard the Father in prophecy, uh, it, it, in, in, in his ministry, if you will. And it was the first one we know is where he's being baptized by John. John baptizes Jesus, 
the heavens open, and the voice comes down and says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And that was such a hallmark moment, signature moment, really uh, catalyzing Jesus into his ministry. And so everyone standing by heard it. It was a, it was a voice that was uh, the Father's voice, profound. And it was audible. But then the second time, only Peter, James, and John heard it while they're up on the Mount of Transfiguration with uh, those who are, who are with Jesus, Elijah and Moses, in the glory. Yep. And so, and, the, and, and this is the voice that they heard. They heard this voice. This is my beloved son. Hear him. Mm. And that was the second time they heard that fa the father speak. And so where are we? We are sort of still stuck in the, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Mm. But we haven't gone on to, this is my beloved son, hear him. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes down to the revelation of Jesus, there's the revelation of salvation and the revelation of the kingdom. Right. Mm -hmm. The kingdom is, the, the, the revelation of Jesus is, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. We get saved knowing that the Father is pleased with the sacrifice of the Son. We come to G we come to the knowledge of salvation through the death and resurrection. That knowledge that Jesus is the pleasing uh, offering to the Father on behalf of mankind and our sin. But the kingdom comes when we hear Him. So we have to begin to 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 go into the next phase of listening, which is this is my beloved Son. Hear Him, and all testimony, Ben. Uh, all, all prophecy t uh, stems from the testimony of Jesus. Come on. We can't prophesy in, in an accurate way, a determined way, until we hear him. So I can't say what he's not saying. No matter how much faith I apply to it, I can't say what he's not saying. Mm -hmm. So if God is saying something and I speak it, that's what he's saying, and I'm going to see fulfillment of that. But if God is not saying it and I'm still operating in faith, I'm stuck at, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, yeah. and not going on to, this is my beloved son, he hear him. Well, well, that's definitely really deep, uh, Jamie. I feel like right now, um, you know, many people are caught in that middle and in that tension, right? And so therefore, even today, um, you know, we all know that God's pleased with us, but how do we go into the realm of the kingdom and, and even graduating and moving forward? And I feel like, you know, uh, again, we need to be able to test his word and we need to be able to test the spirits. I love what you said earlier about fulfillment. And, uh, you know, we need to look at the fruit of a prophetic word or fruit of a prophet's ministry. And we need to be able to judge, uh, you know, the fulfillment of those words. And especially if there's going to be dates, you know, if there's going to be dates, if there's going to be timelines, you know, those are very specific, like you said, designer prophecies, you know, very specific words. Um, however, you know, I think we also need to be able to, uh, you know, look at, okay, what is the fulfillment of this? And we need to judge that. Um, and, you know, I, I really feel like right now, you know, there's in a sense, uh, confusion and mixture and even delusion. And I believe that God wants to release healthy teaching again on the prophetic about how we can be accountable, about how we can be right uh, before the Lord. Um, and even, you know, walking as a witness and as a testimony on earth, because even as you said, you know, and according to the book of Revelation, prophecy is uh, the testament of Jesus. It's about who he is. Yeah. And you know, in the end, are we emanating Jesus? Uh, yeah. you know, uh, just yesterday, I was thinking about the, the verse in, in 1 Corinthians, uh, where it says uh, the prophecies will fade, but love will never pass. You know, love is eternal. And I think, again, uh, everything in this life, the reason why we prophesy is for love. You know, uh, out of love, we prophesy. You know, it's because of love. And I feel like, again, uh, you know, God is leading us back to love. You know, God is leading us back to humility. And, uh, you know, uh, and I believe God is releasing uh, a healthy fear of the Lord so that every single one of us that will be able to be in the middle, but also continue to graduate and that we would receive correction. We will receive accountability. We will be surrounded uh, by healthy fathers and mothers. And, uh, you know, that we would have sound biblical theological training and teaching that we will go back to the word again. Yeah. 
So good. Then that, I think, uh, you know, for me, understanding the word, it, it helps me. It sets me up for success in the prophetic because I begin to see both the, the failures and the successes of prophetic people, you know, all through scripture. But when we think about prophecy in modern terms, new covenant understanding, yeah. prophecy is not just to tell the future, it's to tell where God is in the future. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what's what, what good is it to know the future if you don't know where God is? Yeah, that's so and, good. and that's the difference really between psychics and prophets. Mm -hmm. You know, psychics can possibly tell you future. That I, 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 you know, it's, it, it's apparent that they have the ability to, to, to future tell, but uh, they, they're not able to identify where the Lord is in the future. Mm. Mm. So, and so when prophets prophesy, they're, they're trying to give you language around where to expect to meet God in your future. And so as you move forward in faith into your future, you're going to know this is where God is. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's great to know you know, you're going to have a job opportunity, but is the Lord in that job opportunity? Yeah. You know, it's great to know that, you know, you're going to find new, a new relationship, you know, and maybe you hear something prophetic about that, but is the Lord in that relationship? And that's where we really need to get down to. Where is Jesus? And where is he in my past, present, and future? You know, the book of Revelation is probably, possibly the hardest, most difficult book to understand in all of scripture, outside of Hebrews and, and possibly Ezekiel, you know, there's, there's a lot there. And so when we look at the revelation, it's not the revelation of the future. It's the revelation of Jesus. Oh, good. Absolutely. And so that's the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy. Oh. It's the, it's the, the, that time as it, as it unfolds is actually a, an increase of the revelation of Jesus. And so is your prophecy leading you closer to where God is, or is your prophecy just telling you things to come? Now, here's here's the thing. I, I could go out all day long, and, you know, we we, 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 we tune into the weather. We, we go, okay, is it going to rain today? Is it going to be sunny? You know, that's great. But I need to know where I'm supposed to be. It's not just knowing whether it's going to be rainy or sunny. I need to know where I'm supposed to be. That's what prophecy tells you. And so what I think we've done, unfortunately, is we minimize the gift of prophecy just to tell the future when that really is not the point. The point is, I need to know where God is at. Mm. And if if the future is bleak, but the Lord is with me in that future, then I've got hope. If the future is bright and the Lord is with me, then I've got hope. But if if the future is bleak or bright without the Lord, it doesn't matter. Because I, 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 if I don't have him, where am I? And so we have to come back to, this is my beloved son, hear him. Where are you, Jesus? Okay. What are you saying? Where are you going? I want to be where you're at. And if I could dial into that, then the prophetic will actually set me up for success and not heartbreak. My gosh, Jamie, you preaching. I'm, I'm loving this discussion. Uh, because uh, prophets, uh, I mean, we're meant to release the heart of God. And uh, I, I love what you said earlier. Psychics can foretell the future, but they cannot recognize Jesus because prophecy is redemptive. And yes. prophecy, it points us to the Father, to Jesus, to the Father, but it's also redemptive in nature. And, and future telling or moving out of a soulish psychic realm, it will tell of your future, but there's nothing redemptive. Because right. You cannot alter the future. Only God can. Right. And so, you know, prophets and prophetic people, we prophesy, we declare, and the future begins to get altered because we're actually prophesying from the realm of possibilities. So yes. I think that was just incredible because we're meant to release the heart of God. You know, uh, as we're about to bring this to a close in the next uh, five or so minutes, uh, prophet, you know, as we're talking about the prophetic reformation and the prophetic reset, you know, I was just reminded, uh, you know, just maybe about 20, 30 years ago when, and since the whole prophetic movement was really birthed and mainstreamed, that there are some guidelines, you know, and I feel like, you know, in a sense, it's good for us to not, not to be religious or legalistic, but it's good for us to kind of go back to some of these guidelines like don't prophesy 
uh, about a man's husband or, or a man's wife or a woman's husband. You know, I mean, so those were those taboo words of like, OK, you know, try to stay uh, away from those prophecies and those prophetic words because so many people were heartbroken. Right. Um, uh, and of course, whenever it came to that realm, like, you know, I mean, I've had so many uh, women. I'm sure you've had that too. So many people came and said, I had a dream that you were my husband. I was like, no, you did not. You know, that was not from God. You know, that was your soul. That was, you know, whatever it was. And so, but again, that whole topic was in a sense, a big taboo where, you know, it was a guideline of saying, okay, when you prophesy, try, you know, you should stay away from these holy, you know, type of things as much as possible. And now, even as we're talking about the elections, we know the elections, God is so interested in it. You know, God is all over it. God is in it for sure. You know, I mean, it, it's such an important thing to him. So when it comes to, you know, the elections, when it comes to the nation of America, politics, when it comes to certain things, I feel like, you know, again, we need to do a heart check and have certain guidelines of, okay, Maybe we need to process and interpret, wait upon the Lord, etc., much more like these marriage type of words. What do you think, Prophet? You know, you're you're kind of landing on the surface of that thing. And so what you're saying is is something that kind of became a rule uh 20 years ago in, in regard to prophetic healthy prophetic ministry. And so there was an etiquette, there was a rule stating, you know, you can't prophesy dates, mates or uh or babies and yeah. and you know while i would say that there's variations of that regarding a healthy prophetic ministry uh because I'm, I'm not hard and fast on that rule but what i would say is that are you intimately acquainted with either the person you're prophesying to or the group mm -hmm. that you're prophesying to do you have the heart of god on that or um you know are you just spewing out information because here's here's what happened when when Saul is about to be king he goes to visit Samuel the seer and Samuel says this interesting thing to him in 1 Samuel 9:19 9, he says come up before me and stand before me and there I will tell you all that is in your heart mm. he was a he was a heart reader so good and so the prophetic per, that that prophet Samuel was a heart reader he was able to read Saul's heart. And we can, uh, there's one thing to read someone. There's another thing to read their, their, their mind. And then there's another thing to read their heart. Okay. And God gives the secrets of the heart. And so I think that the prophetic needs to tap into the secrets of the heart of the nation where we're, we don't, we haven't done that. And so what we do is we give these surface words uh, but we're not actually identifying what's the heart of the nation. Uh, you know, there are prophets in in past. I'm reminded of uh, Paul Cain. Paul Cain, who was a massive, massive voice, uh, one of the most, you know, powerful prophets uh, in, in the 20th century. And uh, Paul Cain said something when uh, I think it was Bill Clinton was about to be president. And he said, God is about to give you a president after your own heart. And this was a, his prophecy. And so it wasn't him trying to declare so-and-so is going to be president. Or so he's, he's identifying where the heartbeat of the nation is. And so it was apparent that this was the, where the heart of the nation was. And over those next uh, years of his presidency, we began to see something that were really indicative of what was going on within our nation as a whole. And so uh, we have to begin to understand and see these things according to the heart. And that takes not only skill, but history with God. And it takes history with God. And it, and it takes history with people. And so for me, you know, years ago, Ben, and I know you're a pastor, and I've, uh, I, you know, I was going around ministering on itiner in itinerant ministry and short-term missions, and conference speaking and and you know writing books and all that stuff and the lord said to me i want you to i want you to go to east pa i want you to go to philadelphia and i want you to plant a church i want you to pastor a people okay. and i said why lord he says because they're going to teach you something and so in that 6 years uh senior pastoring i learned something about people that i wouldn't have gotten any other way 
A lot of prophetic people are discon- uh, disconnected from the people they minister to oh, good. And, and the nation that they're speaking to, you know. And so we have to begin to be so in love with people that we we will we spend time with them, we get to know them. We and that doesn't limit our prophetic abilities and our prophetic impact with them. It actually gives us greater credibility that when I prophesy, there's a trust there. Well, you know, the prophet, that's so good because we are meant to weep with those who weep. We are yes. meant to uh rejoice with those who rejoice. And literally. Uh, I mean, once again, it's going back to this. Are you crying over the prophetic words uh, wow. that God shows you or the visions? Uh, and again, not because it's doom and gloom, but because you're you're so uh, pressing into uh, the reality and the realness of the verdict of that word. Yes. And, you know, and so I feel like, you know, we need to carry, you know, these revelations and these words and visions that God gives us like a baby. We need to really steward it before we release it to the world. Uh, it's like when you have a newborn child, you know, you have to protect your baby uh, and it can't be out in the sun. You know, it cannot touch right. the elements of the outside world. You need to keep it safe probably for about three, four months or so. And, you know, I feel like, you know, too many people are opening the stove too quickly. You know, the wow. pie is not finished. But they're opening the stove too quickly. That's a good illustration. Come on, yeah, and, and it's ruining everything. All the I feel the Holy Ghost. All the ingredients are there, but because you prematurely open the door rather than letting it bake and cook for the right time, therefore it's unedible. You can't eat it, and it'll make you sick. And uh, so I feel like that's where a lot of us are today. We need to let it cook for a little bit more. <laughs> Prophet, any last words before we bring this uh, show to a close? It was so rich today. Man, I just really appreciate you, buddy. Thank you so much for having me on. And, uh, I, you know, I think uh, the, the the more we have discussions like these, I think people are going to be equipped for, for these times to identify what is a true, authentic, prophetic word look like? What does true prophecy look like? And uh, And so I appreciate that, Ben. Thank you so much. Oh, we, we love you. We honor you and, and love your ministry. And obviously, you know, everything is about the heart of God. And even today, I could feel the heart of God and just a redemptive, uh, you know, a love that's in the realm of the prophetic. Thank you for stewarding that and walking that. Can you just release a, a impartation to our people just to carry the heart of God in the midst of these times, the heart of a nation, the heart of the Father, the heart for people? Yes, Lord, thank you for such a time as this we've been brought into the kingdom that we can release your great love on this earth and demonstrate who you are do that in us equip us and anoint us release your your presence among us teach us your ways show us your face i ask for an impartation of your gifts lord to those that are watching and those that are listening release your gifts and help them grow and these wonderful gifts of the Spirit, teaching them how to operate in character and in the fruit of God and godliness. And so we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Prophet Jamie Galloway, for being with us on the show on The Break. We're talking about the prophetic reset. How can people find you and follow you and your ministry? Oh, thank you, Ben. You know, if they just go to jamiegalloway.com or any of the social media uh, that I have, you can find me there. Uh, love to stay connected, love to hear what, what's going on in your life. And, um, and so look forward to hearing from you. So good. Bless you, prophet. We appreciate you. Uh, thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you, Ben. Wow. People of God, wasn't that incredible? Such a rich topic and discussion with the one and only prophet, Jamie Galloway. And, uh, I can just feel the heart of God. I feel refreshed and edified. Uh, comment below, what did you enjoy about our show today? And make sure you like, share, and do subscribe, okay? Uh, this is Pastor Ben Lim with The Breaker, where we are believing that God is breaking through in this prophetic reformation and in this prophetic reset. Thanks for watching. Until next time, remember, He is the Lord of The Breaker.